Last month, I posted a video and an accompanying shoot that was all about capturing an iconic image. I talked about how a lot of those iconic images that you might think of are simple and not necessarily formally posed. In that video, I focused on using a simple look and a simple setup. What I didn't talk too much about was how to actually have your model pose, or not pose as the case may be, and how you can help yourself capture the moment. Let's talk about that now. When you are shooting a model, oftentimes we want them to get into that pose and then hold on to it while we, the photographers, adjust our settings, our lighting, and anything else that we may be using to get that perfect photo. You may have gone through some pose ideas with magazines or something like my e-lookbook, and all that's fine, great even. I love having a plan prior to shooting. But here's something else to consider. When you have a model into the studio, or anywhere really, think about having that inspiration, whether it be a photo or a story you've made up, then, rather than have the model find still pose after still pose, have them move around a bit while you're shooting. This is gonna serve several purposes for you. First, on the technical side of things, if you instruct your model to kind of stay in the same pose, but move around a little bit within the pose, you're gonna be getting different angles, different angles of the face, of the body, and hopefully one of those angles will be the winner. Similarly, the light will be hitting the model in her pose in slightly different ways. Again, you're looking for that combination where the pose and the lighting work together. The model might not hit it on the first try, you might not hit it on the first try, but allowing the model to move organically a bit with the light in his or her mind, allowing yourself to move around a little bit if needed, you'll keep the pose fresh because the model's still moving and probably not stiffening up in that same pose being held. And hopefully find that one image that you're looking for, or maybe that you weren't looking for but found anyway. And by the way, it's good to use the model's creativity when moving around, but you know, also don't be afraid to suggest ways for them to move around either. When a model is in a certain pose for a while, even if she's just hit her next pose, it can end up looking stiff. But when the model is moving around, you will probably get a more natural or relaxed look. I touched on that a second ago. And you know what, from my experience as a model and a photographer, I've come to realize how much this actually builds up during the shoot. It's definitely a snowball effect in a good way. If you have your model moving around and then shaking it out and finding a new idea and moving around there a bit, you'll find that your results will get better and better as you both get more comfortable and find more kind of spontaneous shots. Now, other than having the model look more relaxed, and natural while moving around, you might even be able to capture other movements. Her hair falling back, the fabric of her shirt moving around her. This can give some life to the image that the viewer will find interesting. And this will definitely extend to larger movements, like if you have the model twirling around or running. Speaking of larger movements, especially if you are using studio lights or are in the studio, make sure the model knows where to be or rather where she needs to stay so that you don't end up with her off the backdrop or completely losing the light on her. Even when you aren't in the studio, you may need the model to work within some confines. In my forest shoot, I was moving around trying to stay in the shadows rather than in the bright and kind of harsh morning sun, but I ended up sometimes half and half where the photo would have been great, but I've got some weird light and shadow dynamics that I don't like. Now, the model's posing is one thing, but how do you actually capture the image? Well, I have some tips for you. Depending upon the movement, you may need to increase your shutter speed to capture the action. Although a little motion blur isn't always a bad thing. You may even want to use shutter priority. Think about using continuous servo autofocus, which is also sometimes called AI servo, depending upon your camera brand. Again, this will depend upon how much the model is really moving, but it may be a good idea, especially if you're working with a shallow depth of field. If the model moves forward or back too much while you're clicking away, you could end up with a bunch of out of focus shots. With continuous or AI servo autofocus, your camera will continue to focus even after you half press the shutter release button. So any movements that happen in between the half press and full press will be caught. Also, if you aren't in fully manual mode, think about how your camera is going to calculate exposure. For example, how is your camera metering? If you are in a high contrast lighting situation, you may be using spot metering. If so, make sure you are being careful to keep that spot on your model's face or wherever you've deemed the right place to meter even when she's moving. Or think about leaning on the camera's technology a bit, like will using auto ISO help you have one less thing to think about while trying to catch the model's motion? Lastly, a good talk to your model beforehand will always set you up for success. 
Talk about what types of photos you both want to capture, but also talk about this technique. Maybe tell them to make their movements small at first, especially if either of you aren't used to doing this type of shooting. That will allow you to both get used to it and work your way in. You may have noticed in your shooting of models or other portraits that you capture really cool photos if you shoot the in-between times. Those times when your model isn't really posing for the shot. Maybe she's adjusting her jewelry or her hair. Maybe you're talking with her and she's laughing or waiting for you to adjust your camera settings. I've certainly found that those in-between shots, spontaneous type photos, are almost always amongst my favorites of the shoot. This is just sort of formalizing that, making sure that you have those spontaneous, relaxed moments. So there's a link in the description of this video to a post on snapcheck.com. In that post, I have links to the couple of other videos that I mentioned today, plus I have a couple example photos for you. Also, for VIPs, you can see the entire gallery of photos from this shoot, plus your exclusive video, which I shot on the scene and talked about where I was, technical details, and challenges I encountered.